Hey everyone, Brendan Snyder here, how are you? Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to a special review where we have been waiting 23 years for this album, the brand new solo album from Free and Bad Company frontman Paul Rogers. It's called Midnight Rose. It just came out on Friday, September 22nd of 2023. Sixth solo album, but 22nd studio album overall. And I'm gonna break down all of that info as well as this album here, do a full unboxing of it in just a bit. But before we get started, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus by subscribing, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this with a special review for the brand new Paul Rogers solo album, Midnight Rose. So I wanna jump back a bit as I always do, give you guys a little bit of context here. And so we're going back 55 years here till 1968 when he first joined the band Free. And in 1970, they had their first international hit, a pretty big one with the song All Right Now. And their final album, Heartbreaker, in 1972, featured another massive hit for them, the song Wishing Well, which set up things very nice for them. Unfortunately, they broke up, they didn't continue on, and they released six albums overall during that time frame. And once they had ended, both Paul and Simon Kirk, the drummer, formed a new supergroup, Bad Company. And that's really where most people know Paul Rogers from. Uh, the band also featured Mick Ralphs on guitar coming from Mata Hoople and Boz Burwell on bass from King Crimson. And the band itself was an immediate success right out of the gate. Uh, their debut 1974 album sold 5 million copies. Big, you know, hits, multiple um, staples on the radio, that sort of thing. And the band itself would go on to release six studio albums with Paul Rogers fronting the band before breaking up in 1983. And I thought that was interesting there in that both Free and Bad Company did six albums with Rogers before breaking up. Paul then released his first solo album, Cut Loose, which I think is a perfect album. It's one of my all-time favorite albums in my whole collection, this one here from 83. But, you know, not wanting to sit back and rest on his laurels, he formed another super group, The Firm, with none other than guitar legend Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin. And rounding out the lineup was Chris Slade on drums coming from Manfred Mann's Earth Band, but of course most of us know him from ACDC and like on the Razor's Edge uh, album. Tony Franklin on bass from Roy Harper's band, but of course he would go on to play with Blue Murder, White Snake, and a number of others. And the band released two albums, they're self-titled and Mean Business. So the first one in 85 and the follow-up in 86. And you know, if that wasn't enough there, when that one didn't work out, he formed another super group, The Law. So you can kind of see the trend here that he was doing. Uh, the Law was with uh, both Paul and Kenny Jones. It was just two members. We didn't have a much bigger uh, lineup like we did with The Firm. Uh, Kenny Jones, though, coming from The Faces, The Small Faces, and of course, The Who. And you add that in with Paul, who plays all the other instruments and everything. And, you know, you got a full band in and of itself. And so they released the one album in 1991. Unfortunately, that didn't uh, really take either. It also focused on outside writers, and I don't know why you would wanna do that when you have someone as gifted as Paul, um, as a writer, a singer, all of that, why you would end up using outside writers, but that's what they did. So no real surprise then that it didn't work, and Paul returned to being a solo act. But you know, it wasn't long before he was joining another band, and this time around, he joined Queen, becoming Queen plus Paul Rogers, not replacing Freddie, but just uh, you know joining in. And they launched a tour in 2005 and released that album there, The Cosmos Rocks, in 2008. Unfortunately, that partnership didn't last and they split in 2009. 2014, Paul released a covers album, The Royal Sessions, which featured blues, R&B, and soul songs. But it wasn't until now, 2023, that we are finally getting uh, Paul returning to writing original material, putting something out, his first solo album since 2000's Electric. So that's what we're here to talk about. Midnight Rose, this absolutely amazing album, in my opinion. Sixth solo album. 
uh, featuring eight songs. They're all originals, no covers on here. And again, as I say, when you got somebody as great as Paul, why would you want covers and stuff like that? Um, clocks in though at only 32 minutes, which is really unfortunate. Um, normally I would argue and say that a shorter album, they're trying to fit everything on vinyl, but at 32 minutes, you're, you're barely beyond an EP length at this point, and you could have fit another 15 plus minutes on or so. But that doesn't mean that this album isn't amazing. Sometimes when you cut out all of the filler and you just have a bunch of killer tracks, it's a benefit. So the album itself is released on the legendary Sun Records. And according to Paul, he wasn't planning on releasing the album. Uh, he said he was in the studio messing around uh, with his band, a solo band. Um, the owner of Sun Records gave him a call, wanted to know what he was up to. He mentioned that he'd recorded a few new songs and they said, hey, we'd be interested in releasing those. And so he thought, why not? Let's uh, finish this up and put them out. And that may also be why it's only eight tracks. He may have just decided you know, why force it? Why try to write two or three more songs on this thing? Let's just put out what we've got. And so the album um, itself, in my opinion, sounds better than I would have expected it to at this point. I mean, after being so long since getting new material from Rogers, you know, it's got a lot to live up to at this point. But in my opinion, this album is really, really good. It's some of the best material that I think he's done in his entire career, and certainly some of the best that he's done um, as a solo artist. And most closely replicating the stuff from Bad Company, but I do feel there's a little bit of everything from each era of you know projects and things that he's been part of. If you've liked any of his career, I think you're really going to enjoy it. And certainly going back as far as the 1983 album, Cut Loose, which as I said is a great solo album. Uh, this material on here, I think, certainly stands up to that as well. Of note on here, when I was flipping through on the inside liner notes on this, I saw that um, none other than famed Metallica and Motley Crue producer Bob Rock is on here playing uh, guitar. But then I also noticed that he co-produced the album too, which may be one of the reasons why this album is so good. He's certainly known for being able to get the best out of uh, you know bands and artists and things like that. We've also got uh, the album featuring Todd Roning on here, who's currently the bass player for Bad Company. Uh, so you got really got two guys here from Bad Company on this album with some other stellar uh, session musicians. But I want to talk to you guys now about the songs that are on here. While there may only be eight songs on here, the album kicks off with a really strong one called Coming Home. Uh, it's a nice heavy blues rocker. This one here uh, still shows the power of Paul's voice, and I've got to emphasize that a bit just saying how great he sounds uh, at this point. There is nothing lost in the power of his vocals on here. This song, the opening track on here, would be right at home on any Bad Company album. Track number two, Photo Shooter. It's another standout song on the album. It's rocking with a really nice groove. It just keeps the power moving on this album. Track number three, Midnight Rose, the title track, changes up the pace on the album. It sort of creates the first valley. I love albums that have those peaks and valleys and moves you through on. It's not just all kind of monotonous at one pace. Uh, so this one's slowing things down here a bit on it. It's an upbeat acoustic ballad, but it still uh, gives you some nice change of pace on the album. Track number four, Living It Up. This one here was the first single. I think it was a great way to introduce the new material to the fans when they dropped this one, but I'm glad to say that this song is in the middle of the album. Track number four, it doesn't just kick it off. You get to experience some other material before you get to this one, but it's another hard rocker, so it returns us to those peaks on this album here and just plows things along with some really great guitar work on it. And then my favorite song on the album is actually the last track on here. It's track number eight, Melting. And this one here starts with a bit of swagger. It's got a very bluesy feel to it, and it kind of just begins to build slowly throughout. And about the two minute mark through in this song, it really kicks in. It's just kind of one of those songs that's like everything that you'd been hoping it was gonna be when it kicks in, it is. It's just that. So another just very strong, powerful tune. And in fact, all eight of the songs on here are like that. I could have talked about each one on this. These are just the few that I wanted to pull out and focus on for you guys. But let's take a look at this. 
I have to say, with the album art that's on here, which I think is really cool and really interesting, it definitely seems like Paul is uh, looking back, having a bit of nostalgia. And, you know, I think he's like 73, so why wouldn't he be doing that at this point? And some of you guys have weighed in and said you didn't like the art because this heart is sideways and maybe not vertical on here. But the art does continue on around and so there is the in fact maybe the full art that you want to see you get the backside with the uh, tracks on it you get some a little bit of a statement that's right there what's interesting is that all the little images and things that are in there there's a diagram of it on the inside and it tells you what every one of those images are and so that's where I was talking about him being in a bit of a nostalgic state because in here, I'm just going to read off a few of these things, but you know, he has a message from Elvis. It's got his first car in here. It uh, shows a number of guitars in here from various famous musicians that he's played with, like one from Jimmy Page. We've got one in here from uh, Mick Ralph's uh, Bad Company. We've got one from Paul Kossoff from Free. So very cool in how he's done that. And then when we open the album itself, we get a few more things, other pictures of guitars and stuff like that. When we pop the disc out, that's what we get here. And we still get this booklet here in the middle of this. So we'll pull that out and give a quick thumb through on it. Now the front of this thing, and of course, back side of it is still like the rest of it. And as we go into it, he has a little write up there. That's where he explains that he wasn't even intending on making this album. It just sort of came to be. And sometimes that's why uh, these things are the best. Uh, there's a painting that Paul did. That's where the title comes from, Midnight Rose. And there's the piece there. So that's uh, that little tidbit of trivia for you. Uh, and get lyrics that are in here with some more imageries all throughout. They tell you what all of these pictures are and meanings behind them, which is very cool. Just gave a little something extra for listening to the music and seeing all this great stuff in here. But there you go. So bottom line on this album, it is an amazing return for one of Rock's most amazing vocalists, in my opinion, who's really lost nothing, proving that at 73 years old, he still got it. There's just no question about it. Um, you know, for all the amazing bands that Paul has been a part of, Free, Bad Company, The Firm, The Law, and of course, all the solo stuff, it just proves that he really is the key element in all of those things. Listening to an album like this and how strong and how great it is, I think just uh, sends that home in spades. And so, you know, if you haven't been following, you lost track with Paul, um, or you've ever been a fan of Paul, uh, and these other bands, I definitely think it is time to reacquaint yourself with him on this new solo album, Midnight Rose. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. You know, it sounds like classic material coming from him, and it's just one of those albums that is really, really strong. And, you know, 73 years old, putting out an album this amazing, kudos to him. All right, and there you go. That is the brand new review for the Paul Rogers Midnight Rose uh, album. Certainly let me know your thoughts. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have. If this is the first time you're hearing about this album, you've been holding off, as I said, go check it out. I think you're going to dig it. All right, everyone, take care. Have a good one, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.